What's up friends? Today we're covering all of the available styling parameters inside of Brevity. This tool provides the most customizable, easy to use interface for generating animated captions inside of Premiere Pro. It uses a state-of-the-art transcription model and provides plenty of different styling presets to get you started. The tool is easy enough to use in one click, but it's powerful enough to create virtually any caption style. So whether you're looking to generate those trendy social media subtitles, add AI suggested stock media to your sequences, or automatically generate social ready content, Brevity is a tool for you. If you're just getting started, I recommend checking out our other intro tutorial on generating captions as this one primarily covers the styling options included in Brevity. Let's jump in. All right, so I have a sequence open here with a clip from my buddy's podcast and I'm going to quickly generate some captions for it using Brevity. So let's go ahead and set our in and out points for the sequence. You can do that using the I and O key here. And then let's just click on captions. I'm going to leave the caption style as none, and then I'm going to leave the transcription settings as default. Brevity can transcribe over 100 different languages and can even translate to other languages. So if you're interested in learning more about that, check out the link in the description for a tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and click on create. So Brevity has gone through, it's rendered out the audio from our sequence, it's transcribed it, and it's added this new caption layer to our sequence and also loaded up the captions inside of the panel here. Let's go ahead and pop open the style window to go through all of the different styling parameters inside of Brevity. Now at the top here, we have the preset menu bar. And inside of here, you can browse all of the different available presets that come built into the tool along with all of your save presets. So if we just scroll through some of these trending presets here, you can see that we have a wide variety of different styles and it's super easy to apply these. All that you need to do is just click on a preset. It's going to go ahead and load it up inside of our sequence and now it's already ready to go. And my co-founder Ryan Harris is great at that. He was already a realtor, so he understood. So we can go ahead and save our own preset as well. Go ahead and just click this new button and this is going to show us a preview of what the preset will look like and we can just give this a name, hit save, and that will appear again back in our save presets. Awesome. Now below that, we have a section for the block of captions, and this is going to pertain to the entire block of captions that's currently on the screen. So we can set the position of these captions to be at the bottom, or maybe we want them to be in the middle, and we can further adjust the positioning using this padding option. So if we set this down to be like zero, it's going to be right in the middle of the composition. And we can go ahead and set this to be top. It's going to be right at the top, but I'm going to leave this at the bottom, maybe set the padding to be like 20% here. Below that, we have the option to play with the scale of the caption blocks here. So we can go ahead and scale this down if we want, or we can scale it up. Super easy to use. Below that, we have the block animation menu. Inside of here, there's a bunch of different animation styles that we can choose from. Right now in this preset, it's set to zoom spin, but let's go ahead and set this to be pop. And we can choose the intensity that we want here. This is going to be the intensity of the animation. And below that, we have the option to change the speed of the animation. So let's go ahead and give this a quick preview. One that can get out in front of and speak to a lot of people. And again, there's a bunch of different styling animation options inside of here. We've got fade, pop, zoom, pop spin, slide down, slide left, slide up, zoom, zoom spin, and none. Plenty of options to choose from, and you can always further dial in the animation by using the intensity and speed sliders. Cool, so below that we have the random rotation, and this will allow us to add some random rotation to our caption blocks. So if we go ahead and enable this, we can crank up this rotation, and let's just go through and kind of just scrub through our timeline here. You can see that these caption blocks all have these different types of random rotation. You can, you know, choose the amount of random rotation that you want. If you're not liking the randomness, you can always change the seed to get a different style of randomness here. Cool. So below that, we have the background option. And inside of here, we can choose to enable a background along the entire block of captions inside of our sequence. So let's go ahead and set this to enabled. I'm going to scale down these captions a little bit so it fits inside of our sequence better here. That looks good. And inside of here, we can choose the color. We can choose the opacity. We can choose the roundness. We can choose the X padding, the Y padding, plenty of options to really dial in whatever type of background you're looking for here. And below that, we have a section that pertains to the text styling. So inside of here, we can choose a font for our text. And this is a list of all of the locally installed fonts that are on your computer. So you can go ahead and search for a font here if you want. 
or just browse through the entire list. Below that, we have the font style. Depending on what font you have selected, sometimes they have a bunch of different styles that are included in the font. For example, with Adobe Clean here, we have all of these different styles of fonts and we can go ahead and just you know select whatever one we want and it will update automatically inside of our sequence. Awesome. So below that, we have the option to include punctuation. And if we detoggle this, there's going to be no punctuation and enabled, there will be punctuation. Let's go ahead and find the section. As you can see, punctuation, no punctuation, easy. Below that, we have options for the leading. And this is going to be the amount of space in between the lines inside of your sequence here. If we crank this up, you can see that these lines are becoming more and more separated but we can go ahead and bring this back down to like 70. And next to that, we have the tracking. This is going to control the amount of space between each individual character. Go ahead and crank this up. Now these characters are going to be more spaced apart. Back down to like two, maybe three, cool. Below that, we have the text case control. We can choose between all lowercase. We can set this to be regular or all uppercase. And we can also choose the text color from inside of here as well. Below that, we have the stroke options. So we can control the stroke width and we can also control the stroke color all from inside of here. Uh, below that, we have some miscellaneous styling options as well. First is the following. So if we detoggle following here, you can see that building is the current word that's being said and all of the following words are no longer included in our captions. But if we toggle this on and slide down the opacity here, you can see that we could set the opacity of the following words to be lower or whatever we want. Below that, we have the option to add a drop shadow. And inside of here, we can control the color of the shadow, the opacity, distance, angle, softness, all typical styling parameters for drop shadows. Now below that, we have the active text section. So inside of here is where we are going to be able to control the styling for the word that's currently being said inside of our sequence. So as you can see, building is the word that's currently being said inside of our sequence. And we can go ahead and chain a bunch of different parameters for the word that's currently being said. Go ahead and increase the scale here. And as you can see, building is going to be much larger now because it's the active word that's being said and because we set the scale to be higher. Go through and play through our sequence here. You can see that the active word is going to be changing depending on which word's being said. Maybe I'll go ahead and bring this back down. And below that, we have the option to choose the animation style for the active word. Right now it's set to zoom, but again, we have all of these different animation options inside of here, including blur, fade, pop, slide down, slide left, slide up, zoom, and none. Plenty of different options to choose from. And just like the block animation styles, we can choose between the intensity and the speed to really dial this in for whatever we're looking for. Cool, so below that we have the tracking. And this is going to be, again, the amount of tracking that's applied to the active word. Scale this up, you can see that the current word day is becoming more and more spaced apart. Below that we have options for the text case. So right now the active word is set to all caps and that's why day is entirely in caps, but we can set this to be all lowercase, again, normal case, whatever we want. And also we can change the text color of the active text as well. Maybe I wanna do, let's do white. That probably looks good with the black stroke here. And again, we control the stroke from here as well. Below that, we have the option to add a background to the active text. Go ahead and enable this. Now we have a background along the active word as it's being said. Just play through our clip here. People all day, every day. And my co-founder, Ryan. Sweet. And of course, we can change the color of this very easily. Maybe we want something like this blue here. Awesome. In this last section here, we can choose specific styling that's applied to highlighted words inside of our captions. So right now, we don't have any highlighted words, so that's why we're not seeing any of this styling come through. Let's go ahead and fix that. We'll close out of this window, and now we can head over to this highlight tool. The highlight tool allows us to just click on words to automatically highlight them inside of our sequence. And you can see, as I clicked on font, it's now changed that uh, word in our sequence to inherit special styling. So we can go through here and just click on a bunch of different words that we think would be good to be highlighted. But if we don't want to manually comb through our entire sequence and find those highlighted words, we can go ahead and click on this suggest highlights button. And this is going to use AI to identify a bunch of keyword worthy words. It's going to identify a bunch of keywords that might be good to be highlighted and automatically highlight them for us. So as you can see, we have all of these highlighted words now inside of our sequence here. 
and they're also reflected inside of the viewer. Great, so let's go back to the style window. And down here, you can see that we have many of the same parameters as the active text section, but these styling parameters are only going to be applied to highlighted words. That's why this wanted, since it's a highlighted word inside of our sequence, has this yellow font color to it. We can go ahead and set the scale of these highlighted words to be larger. We can set the animation to be something specific that's different than the active words. We can set the tracking to be different, set the text case to be different, stroke color, stroke width, and we can also have a separate background color if we want. The last thing that we might want to do is adjust the layout of our captions inside of our caption blocks here. So let's go ahead and close out of this style window and let's head over to the paragraph tool. Now I can easily set the amount of lines to be something like one, and that's going to update all of our captions to just have one line, or we can crank this way up and have this be like, you know, four or five or six, whatever you want, super easy to change the layout. And let's go ahead and set this back down to be like two. And let's talk about the character slider here. So the character slider is going to control the maximum amount of characters per line. If we go ahead and drag this down to be like super low here, you can see that our lines are going to be much lower, much shorter here. The last thing inside of the paragraph tool is this format captions button. And if we go ahead and click on this, it's going to adjust all of our caption blocks for legibility basically means that it's going to split up sentences and just make it easier for the viewer to read. So we can go through and just take a look at some of these captions and how they're formatted. Uh, it's just going to make it a lot easier to view when you're watching this video back. The one that can get out in front. Now, of course, if you need to make any edits to your text, you can just use this text editing tool, click on a block of captions, make your changes, click out of it, and it will apply super easy as you can see these captions are extremely customizable and allow you to create virtually any style there's plenty of presets to choose from and editing them is super easy this is definitely the best captioning tool out there for premiere pro if you're looking for any additional styling options just drop a comment and i'll be sure to integrate them as soon as possible brevity is your social video creation switchblade it can literally 10x your speed when creating this type of content so be sure to check out some of our other tutorial videos on how to fully utilize this tool including ai suggested stock media auto cutting your podcast into social ready clips this tool is crazy would love to get your all's thoughts Drop a comment, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.